So when you look at history of the Soviet Union or Mao's China, what you saw was the Cultural Revolution. And essentially what it means is they would take everything of your history, it doesn't matter what it is, all the statues, modern day book burning, just taking everything of your history and just destroying it all. Books represent humanity as it, at its best and its worst. To burn books is simply a fundamental repression of ideas. I mean, what can a book do and why is it so dangerous that, that it needs to be physically annihilated? Anything that would, you know, relate to you having some form of national pride. Because what their agenda was, was to create a new people. And lo and behold, that's what the globalists favour. So these, you know, Marxists are not as anti-globalist as, as they like to make themselves out to be. The very establishment who support the New World Order support doing exactly this. They want to suppress your national feeling, destroy everything relative to your nation's history. And that was the very reason why you saw Black Lives Matter going after a statue of Robert LeBruce. Robert LeBruce probably never met a black person in his life. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the funny part, right? That's not a case of racism, that's just part of history. He was born in a period of Scotland where he was fighting other white people. What it's shown to you is that this isn't about racism, this isn't about white versus black. Once they go after the statues, destroy all of that, and then they go after the books and they try to rewrite the history. And you even saw this recently, where they're now, you know, arguing to teach black history in the schools. The video I covered on state education, go and watch it. You can study the history of state education for yourself. Study where state education came from. State education was never for the purpose of collectively educating you. It was used to politically indoctrinate, so that when you leave school you become subservient to the state. So what they want to do is they want to now enforce black history, their own version of history and teach that to your kids. Even in uh, a dictionary, a Merriam's Webster's dictionary, they're going to rewrite the definition of racism. Everything's manipulated to, f to fit their agenda. And it's no different to how they try to silence you. They try to silence you because any form of critique against Marxism must be stamped out. Within Antifa itself, there's a lot of different groups that you'll find. Uh, a lot of the members may do it for animal rights or for anti-capitalism, pro-socialism. Personally, when I was in Antifa, a lot of the activism I did was for animal rights. But once they come together in the black bloc and the, under the, behind the black mask, they kind of forget all that. They go for that common goal of silencing whatever their opposition at the moment is. And oftentimes we've seen them uh, silence people simply for political disagreements. The first order of business is you have to cut off the, the wellspring where their ideology comes from. And it's coming from the university, it's coming from academic departments. Our universities are teaching people totally deranged ideas, anti-democratic ideas, and it's not just that they're far left ideas, they're ideas that are untethered to reality dealing with race and gender and trans issues, for example, things that revolve around identity. They're teaching people these ideas. They're not hearing other sides of the coin. So they're all in their little safe spaces. They don't hear anything. And then when they do encounter something, they're so brittle, he's a Nazi. He's gotta be a Nazi, punch him. We gotta overthrow the fascists. Almost all of them are explicitly involved in it. It's less so universities and it's more so particular departments within universities. We call these grievance studies, departments that teach kids, kids, students, to look for grievances everywhere. Racial grievances, gender grievances, any kind of perceived or historical injustice. But these are coming from very specific departments. The nucleation point would be women's studies, gender studies, anything with the word studies in it. But when you look at it in terms of race or gender, and you train people to perennially think about grievances, they've been aggrieved, how can we overthrow this, there's oppression everywhere, you create some very unhappy, very dyspeptic people who, who manifest that through physical violence and silencing others, right? These are not people, these are not open-minded people who like to listen to you and engage ideas. The university explicitly states at Portland State University's Women's Studies page, the word activist or some variant thereof is found seven times. We are creating 
activist students. And what are they what what are what are they activists for? They're activists to find grievances in literally everything. So anything that influences in such a regard. And I found one quite funny. There was a program I used to watch as a kid, Faulty Towers or something. Uh, they've now resorted to banning that. Yet that was a mockery of Nazism. So <laughs> these people are behaving like the, the very fascists that they claim to be against. Because that's what the fascists did. That's what the Nazis did. The Nazis took anything and everything, no different to the Soviet Union, and they banned it that was against their, their very regime. Which is why they would, you know, control the radio uh, stations, they would control the newspaper, so that the state would control what you would read and listen to. So, collectivism is collectivism is collectivism. All of this whole thing of what you're seeing is really just the cultural revolution. Because that's exactly what Mao's China did. Of course, it eventually led to... Um, once they went after the things like in history, they would go after your books, they would, you know, destroy all of that, and then they would go after the people. Typically, they would be stood on the stage facing a hysterical crowd, and they were kicked and beaten and tortured and made to kneel on broken glass, being paraded in the streets. Well, I wonder what happened to all the dissenters who disagree with socialism and seek to go their own way. It is not chess, it is chop. Has anybody here ever heard of the French Revolution before? Does anybody here know what happened to the people who did not get on board with the French Revolution? Was it louder? Say it louder. Say it louder. Oh, we know exactly what happened. Those millions of people were massacred. And that, again, it goes back to that whole thing on their intentions. Oh, they may have good intentions, but their good intentions always led to disastrous consequences. Bickering and this back is what and forth. What kind of change do you get from bickering and back and forth? Matter of fact, let me take this motherfucking mask off. What kind of bickering, what kind of change do you get from bickering back and forth? You're we can all yet. check this out. I'm not done talking, boy. I'm not done. You won't let me talk. I got the mic. Push. Like I said, what the no, I ain't done. And that's the problem. These people never learn from history. Now even Neil Oliver, he's a historian. He understands and he explains all of this. And there was a recent clip, and I want you to basically listen to this. I, I certainly don't think that um uh, selectively editing the past. Uh, is, is any way to, uh, you know, leading to any kind of productive and, and, and happy future. Mm. Uh, I certainly take a position where we need more, more history, more clues to history, uh, more pages from the story, if possible. Uh, I, I say that you add to history, you don't subtract from it. Uh, when you run across characters whose morals you don't approve of, mm. uh, and you take them out of the context in which they lived, uh, I, th that is the, that's the early steps. I find it very concerning that the, the, this kind of uh, this kind of behaviour is is a step on the road that leads to the you know to, to mob rule, yep. the tumbrils, to the guillotine. Uh, who are these self-appointed people who believe that uh, they're able to make these value judgments? That process by which people are encouraged to think that they can be denouncing, in this instance, people from the past. But that's baby steps on a road that in, that, that leads to people being encouraged to think that they can denounce family members, their neighbours. Uh, uh, you know, and that's what you know. That's what happened in Mao Zedong's China in the in the Cultural Revolution. You know, thirty odd million people were hounded in that way. Uh, you know, ultimately a hundred million people died in Mao's China. Yeah. Uh, and yet people people feel happy and proud to wear T-shirts with Mao's face on them mm. even today. Yeah. Uh, che Guevara, you know, the iconic poster boy of of communism. Yeah. You know, read the Motorcycle Diaries and see what he had to say about people of color. Mm. Uh, you know, if you want to, if you want to question people's position on race, you know, look at Che, and yet people feel delighted to wear a T-shirt or have a poster on their, on their, on their bedroom wall of, of Che. Yeah, um, it's extraordinary. And, and, the, and the architect, the architect of that whole system, you know, the whole system of, of communism, socialism, that, 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 as far as we know, killed in excess of a hundred million people in the 20th century alone. Mm. You know, the architects of that were Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. Read their correspondence, read their books, see what they had to say about people of colour mm. and other races. Yeah. And in any event, the gulag system in Russia that led to the deaths of 
Well, who knows? 50 million people? We don't really know. We probably never will. That was slavery. That was because it was understood pretty early on that the communist system would only work if it had forced labor, yep. which is another word for slaves. You know, and yet people still, there's no talk I'm, I'm seeing of people taking down statues of Karl Marx or Friedrich Engels. And I'm not saying there should be. I'm not advocating, I'm not advocating the removal of anyone's statue. Mm. Because once you start, you know, he who controls the past controls the future. Well, and I we listen to... understand the, the most that we possibly can. Why are the cannons, why are the guns being turned on individuals and, 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 and the history of this country? Mm. You know, I would like people to point at another country in the world where as many people have as much of a chance of a good life as they have here. He's pretty much said everything that, you know, in, in perfect words that uh, I couldn't have done. Uh, he's basically explained that at the end of the day, never mind just getting rid of the history, you know, these monuments, these statues, they're not they're not there just for the sake of idolising. A lot of, you know, things in history are there. And he's right in saying that you add to history. A lot of this stuff is there so that you can learn from. So you can look at and you can say what is right from wrong and, and, and learn why things happened that they did so that you do not repeat history. Regardless of the fact that he was a socialist, Albert Einstein did say doing the same thing over and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. Well, what happens when you turn a blind eye to recorded history? You deem to repeat history and many more millions of people end up losing their life. Well, that's part of the reason why you would call them useful idiots. It is more like a block party atmosphere. It's not an arm takeover. It's not an arm Arm takeover. It's not an arm takeover. It's not an arm takeover. It's not an arm takeover. There is no threat right now to the public. Our 911 uh, response times have tripled in the area. They've gone from just over five minutes to about 18 minutes. There is no threat right now to the public. Rapes, robberies, and all sorts of violent acts that have been occurring in the area they were not able to get to. There is no threat right now to the public. Rapes. We could have the summer of love. Rapes. Summer of love. Rapes. Summer of love. Rapes. Summer of love. If you're going to Seattle Chaz Autonomous Zone. Be sure to wear. Seattle Chaz Autonomous Zone. You're gonna meet some gentle people there. We could have the summer of love. Well, 